Hello YouTube world, my name is Nicholas Montez and you're watching my YouTube channel, The Teenage Movie Critic. And today we are doing another movie ranking video. Uh, today we are ranking the Zack Snyder movies. It's kind of interesting because it's with the it's for the release of Rebel Moon Part 2. And I'm gonna be honest, I was not planning to do this list mainly because I didn't necessarily know. I, I actually kind of forgot that a Rebel Moon was coming out this weekend. So I would have to re-rank the Zack Snyder movies, but with that said, let's go ahead and get started ranking all 12 Zack Snyder movies. Now, easily coming in at last place is Legends of the Guardians, the Owls of Howl, Gahul. This feels easily like the least interesting of Zack Snyder's movies, and it feels much like a kid's movie. But at the same time, I would say it still masters its action sequences that Zack Snyder is always good for. But once again, it comes in last place for me. Now, this is a movie that when I first saw it, I'm like, this is actually pretty good. And then as time has passed on, I'm like, oh, yeah, this isn't as good. Every character in this movie just kind of gets ruined. And everything is awkward. Flash gets a bad moment where Superman basically shows him that he is not as good. The color of it is just weird. I will say the only thing that kind of is good about this movie is the action. And there's some redeeming qualities within a lot of stuff. But overall, it's just a very flawed movie that I'm glad another version of this movie exists. Now, Batman v Superman is a film that I kind of enjoy. Of course, I think the best thing about this movie is, once again, is the action. Whenever it just comes down to that, those action scenes, they are fantastic. Um, obviously, the main one being the warehouse fight with Batman and the thugs. It is just incredible. To me, it's probably the, the best live-action Batman fight scene we've, we've ever gotten in a DC film, along with the Batman vs. Russians fight in The Flash. Um, and of course, you know, the fight between Batman and Superman itself is actually quite good. So I enjoyed a lot of the action in this movie. When it comes to the characters and the introduction to some things, it feels like it's trying to rush into so much stuff that it doesn't feel like it has a cohesive story. So it comes in 10th place. Now, the first Rebel Moon that I remember watching back in December of 2023 I wasn't particularly a big fan of it. Now there was some cool action, there was some cool world building, and I kind of like that it mixed in the Magnificent Seven and Dirty Dozen and Star Wars in space, for, directed by Zack Snyder. And therefore you get Rebel Moon. And I think that the, all of that sounds sounded kind of interesting. And then we got all the author reviews, and I think the movie's fine, I think. There's some clever twists. There's some good stuff in here. But honestly, I was just kind of bored through it. But that's my thoughts on Rebel Moon Part 1. And now we are going to talk about the second film. And I think that it, this film does things a, slightly a bit better. Especially when it comes to the third act. I like the way that it's kind of big and massive in scale and size. Besides that... Not much else to discuss here. Now, Sucker Punch is a film that I feel like has pretty much all the strengths that a Zack Snyder movie is supposed to have, where it has all the cool action, but it does not have any of the cool characters like the other films do, so kind of disappointing, um, but still kind of fun and entertaining. Now, 300, I would say, is one of the better Zack Snyder movies where he just kind of found a way to tell this story about these men in, in their underwear and red capes and they're doing the battles. The battles are quite epic and there's just a lot of awesomeness when it comes to the premise of it. I actually really enjoyed 300. Now, Army of the Dead, I think, is a solid 
zombie film where you have Dave Bautista in the role for some cool zombie action. And in some ways they, they create a way to make you care about all these characters. And I think it does a solid job at that. Um, but overall, it's a pretty good movie and I enjoy it good enough. Now, to be clear, I have never seen any other Superman story in my life. I've never watched any other Superman film. Man of Steel is the only Superman movie I've ever watched, so I don't really know too much when going into it, but honestly, I really am, I really liked Man of Steel. I think Henry Cavill was actually really good in this role, and I think the score from Hans Zimmer was really good, and the action sequences were also very well done. So, I think in making Superman a dark character in this film was kind of cool. But overall, that's my thoughts on Man of Steel. I think it was a cool movie. And for me, I actually really enjoyed watching Watchmen, where it basically crafts this story of these superheroes in an alternate 1960s, 80s New York Manhattan. And you, you kind of see how all these heroes kind of form into the real society into this alternate real society. And it's just a really cool movie. The action is quite good. The characters are complex. And in some ways, it's just fun to watch from, from all of Zack Snyder-isms. So I really enjoyed watching. Now, Dawn of the Dead, I think is just one of the best zombie movies and I think for me, Zack Snyder was able to capture what the, what this movie was and really just make a, origi a original zombie film where it starts out in the house, the neighborhood, and then the rest of the world. But then again, you get these characters, a bunch of these characters, like a police officer, an owner of a TV store, a, just a regular guy with his wife about, about to have a baby, and all that stuff, and you have you go in this mall and people are paranoid of who to trust, and all that stuff, the zombie action is quite intense, and it just does a lot of great stuff when it comes to being a zombie film, as well as having interesting characters that you can connect to and relate to, if you were in this situation. Now, when they first announced that they were making a Zack Snyder version of Justice League, I was like, what are you guys doing here? Didn't you already make a Justice League movie like back in 2017? I'm like, why are you doing this again? And then I kept seeing all the trailers and I'm like, it looks exactly like the 2017 version, just all of them happen to be in black and white. And then I'm like, okay, I'm ready to check this out, but I don't really know what to get from this. And when you watch the movie, there are a couple of the same scenes in there, but there's also just a, but a lot of them are edited differently. And they also are, they also have that, have a different feel to it. Now, this is, the movie's four hours long, but I think that's, I, I think overall the, the film mastered to tell a, a, a better, a heroic version of this story where the idea of bringing Superman back is great. Instead of Superman making Flash feel like he's a a nobody, he actually gets a heroic moment and goes and every step he takes turns back in time so that way we can get another chance. Cyborg actually gets a great arc in this movie. Wonder Woman gets great scenes in this movie. Aquaman and Batman get some cool scenes in the movie. It actually is quite awesome when it comes to the action. Especially when, like, Superman is beating the crap out of Steppenwolf, uh, or Aquaman just impels Steppenwolf, or even when Wonder Woman kills Steppenwolf. And then, like, the tease at the end with Martian Manhunter possibly joining the Justice League when he was actually a parademon all along, that would have been really so cool to see. But it's, it's crazy because the DCU is now over and we're going to be getting... Superman 2025 with James Gunn next year. That is my ranking of all 12 Zack Snyder movies. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.
Bye-bye.